I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room Channel and this is your tip of the week. Have you recently bought a new sewing machine or this is your very first sewing machine and you're terrified of it? So one of the things you want to do is whip out that user's manual and just kind of thumb through it. You don't have to read a lot of detail right now. Just get an idea of what's in it. Then take a section at a time and read it. Don't, you don't need to read the whole user's manual in one day. This is a user's manual for my Viking Sapphire, and it's pretty thin. There's not a lot in there. For some of my sewing machines that are really high in, there's like two books and they're very thick. So talk about intimidating. But one of the areas that I like to go over really quick here is this is a description of all the stitches and what they're used for. Now these two pages are very intimidating. Tiny little print, need a magnifying glass to read it. When you turn on your machine and you start to scroll through all of the screens, now here's all of the stitches. Now this isn't all of them, there's more. So you just kind of keep going through, glancing at it, and it is very intimidating. So my biggest suggestion is try to le read a little bit in that user's manual every day or at least every other day. Take the time. Don't be afraid to turn the machine on. Just turn it on, put a piece of scrap fabric in there, step on that foot pedal and just go. That's your best way to get started. If you're looking for a new machine and you don't know what to buy, I get this question asked all the time, what machine should I buy? Well, I don't have an answer for you. I'm not gonna tell you what machine. I don't know what your budget is, what you wanna use it for. Go to a sewing machine dealer store and test drive the machines. Tell them what you are thinking about using it for, what you hope to learn to do and use it for. Then they can guide you towards those machines. Another question that you should have when you go in to look for them, if you have any disabilities, for instance, my right hand doesn't work. So all sewing machines are set up for right-handed people. And I, a few years ago, bought a very, very expensive machine and I can't clean it myself. Some of the presser feet, I can't even change myself because of the way the machine is designed. If I had had enough common sense, I should have asked about all that, but I just assumed it was like other machines that I have had. And so now I have to go get someone like my husband to clean and change the presser feet on that machine. So make sure if you've got a disability, you tell the re sales representative what those are so they can guide you towards the correct machine. Another common question I get is when you are stitching a seam and you're just starting your seam, you're on the edge of your fabric and you begin to stitch down and then you back stitch a little bit, bit and then you stitch back down again and everything bunches up. Now that happens to me once in a while. It doesn't happen all of the time. So you have to look at the fabric you are using and I'm going to show you a few different types. This is your standard cotton quilting fabric and I couldn't get it to bunch up. Normally I, I do have problems with this occasionally. One of the suggestions I have is maybe your stitch length is too tight that will uh, cause your fabric to bunch up and kind of buckle all along the way. And so I will often change it and make it a little bit longer. A lot of your machines, once you turn it on and you select the straight stitch, it either is already set at 2.0 or 2.5 in the length. That's just a suggested length. That doesn't mean you have to keep it at that. So you, you can adjust it. So always test on a piece of scrap fabric that's similar to your project and test out your stitch length first before you stitch the whole project together and then it's just a mess. So 
If you still have that problem with bunching, here's what I suggest is that instead of starting right at the raw edge and stitch down, come in at least one stitch length and begin stitching. And if you're doing a back stitch here, don't back stitch all the way off the edge of your fabric. When you go down to the bottom, do the same thing. Stop at least one stitch length before you get to the edge and then back stitch. If you're still having a problem, you've adjusted your stitch length, you're not stitching all the way to the edge of the fabric, you can use a product, well it's a spray on starch, this is best press. You can get it at Joann Fabrics and Crafts and you can get it on Amazon and a lot of other places. You could spray the starch on and then press your fabric and it will get stiff and that will help uh, keep down the buckling in your fabric. This fabric is chiffon and I did a straight stitch seam and you'll notice it's rippling and buckling all through the seam and I used a 2.5. On this side I changed it to 3.0. It's buckling still a little but not as much as this. So again you could use the best press on the chiffon fabric and it will stiffen up. Now it will still buckle slightly because it is a very thin fabric. This is a stretch knit fabric. So whenever you're stitching on a stretch knit, you never use a straight stitch because the moment it stretches as you're getting it on or off or wearing it, that straight stitch thread is going to break. You're not going to be able to save yourself. So on most computerized sewing machines, you have a zigzag stitch. Some machines like mine have a preset zigzag stitch for stretch knits. It's really tiny. And mine, when I first select it, it's set at 2.5 and the width is 1.0. But I don't like it. I think it's too tight, even though it still stretches. But if for some reason I have to pull that seam out because I've made a mistake, and I never make mistakes, I do make mistakes, I like to just make my stitch a little bit longer and wider. So I'll go to 3.0 on the length and 1.5 on the width. And so it still will stretch a lot but if for some reason I have to rip it out, it's a lot easier. So if you're working on the chiffon or the stretch knit and you need to rip out those seams, chances are you will make a hole in your fabric. So I would lengthen your stitch just a little bit. If you plan on using your machine for making a lot of clothing, I highly recommend you invest in a serger sewing machine. What the serger sewing machine does, it will cut the edges straight, bind the raw edges, and do your seam stitch all at the same time. So here's cotton quilting fabric. Here is the stretch knit, and notice it stretches. And then here is your chiffon. And it all lays really, really flat and your clothing just turns out wonderful. You can get a serger starting under $300. So I again, go to a dealer store, have them show them to you. If you can afford one that is self-threading, like most of the baby locks, buy the self-threading one because sergers can be a nightmare to thread if it's not a self-threading machine. Well, I hope this tip of the week was helpful to you. If you have any questions or concerns about a project you're working on or about how to use your machine, leave that question or comment in the comments section 
below your YouTube screen. Sometimes other viewers have answers for you and I try to answer as many of the comments that I can, even though at times it's pretty overwhelming to answer all those questions. But most of the time I'm going to have some sort of helpful tip or I can guide you to where you can get the answer to your question. Now don't forget to follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and happy sewing. If you like the Sewing Room channel, one of the best ways to show your support is to subscribe by clicking on that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And make sure you click on the bell so you receive notifications for all my new videos. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny, and this is Scotty. See you next time.